Oh no, that's fine. I couldn't even get up this without a motor like I have on this thing. He's waiting for me to catch my breath. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> hey Pink Bikers, I'm Mike Levy. This is a sunny California. Down there is the Laguna Seca Raceway and in the middle of it is Sea Otter. It seems to have gotten bigger this year. There are more booths, more things to look at. So let's go do exactly that. Follow me, we'll take a tour. First stop, SR Sun Tour. We're gonna check out the Axon Elite Fork. Now this is their cross country trail fork. So travel wise, you're looking at 80 to 120 millimeters. Now the fork also has a updated air spring. Sun Tour, like a lot of people used to use a steel negative spring. Well, steel weighs more than air, doesn't it? They've gone to a dual air system, a self adjusting dual air system. So just like a lot of other air forks in there, you pump your positive pressure up here, it self adjusts so you always have the ideal negative spring pressure. Damping wise, you can get lockout, rebound, and low speed compression depending on your fork model. Now this is the $650 version, but if you want more, if you want carbon, the works model, 1100 bucks, carbon crown, carbon steer tube, they're all available in both 27.5 and 29 inch wheel sizes, and you can get them now. Ding, ding. Next stop, we're in the Hope booth and we're checking out the front triangle for their HB130. Now that's their 130 millimeter travel trail bike. Now Hope does everything in house. They machine their own molds. They make their own molds. The carbon is sourced from the UK. The resin is sourced from the UK. And the result is this. Now this comes out of the mold looking exactly like this. You can see there are a couple little rough edges that are cleaned up, but other than that, it's ready to go. Bearings are pressed in. The aluminum rear end, which they also make, is set up and just like that, it's good to go. Now they've actually gone through four different molds since the start of this project. They've changed the geometry, they've done things like new cable openings to get this thing all dialed in. It's pretty neat to look at. Also, they have some of their aluminum stuff here that they machine. Now this is the seat stay for the HB160, their 160 millimeter travel bike. And you can see this is where it gets bonded in. You can see the channels where the glue goes in, push it right in and that's that. Pretty neat stuff to look at. Jesus Christ. Oh. Jesus Christ. This thing weighs like a hundred pounds. Oh, is this down country? <sighs> so, we're out of the sun. We're inside to look at the Viathon M1. Now this is from Walmart. But before you get your pitchforks out, we're gonna go over this thing and we're gonna talk about some big picture stuff and why this is important. So first, some details on the bike. Now this is obviously more of a cross country, hardtail trail bike. It has a 120 millimeter fork up front. You're looking at 69.5 degree head angle. So definitely a quick handling cross country trail bike. 73.5 seat angle, that number does not sound as steep as some other bikes, but you remember a lot of those numbers the 76s, the 75s, those are on full suspension bikes and they are a couple degrees steeper because you're dealing with some sag. The reach numbers are definitely a little short. You're looking at 391 for the small, 417 and 439 for the large. So definitely more traditional numbers. Prices, 2,400 bucks gets you the entry level bike. That's 12 speed GX Eagle, no dropper post, $3,000 is the next step up and at 6,000 bucks, you're getting your XX1, you're getting a dropper post, and you're getting it ready to roll. And speaking of ready to roll, these things are gonna be sold online only for now, so not in the stores. When you order one, it's gonna ship directly to you and it's gonna be about 90% assembled. So what you'll need to do is you put on the front wheel, you pop the seat up, and you put on the handlebar. You tighten the faceplate, it ships with a torque wrench, no excuses to do it wrong. Walmart, that name definitely gets people talking and it's usually not in a good way. But I think we need to take a step back here and remember how clicky we can be. If you don't mountain bike, it could be scary to go into a bike shop. It could be an intimidating thing. Now, the other point to keep in mind is that for a lot of people, Walmart is their first point of contact 
for the bicycles. That's where they get their first bike from. They go in there when they're a kid or they're young and they get a bike that costs you know, $199. And here you could say you can make all your jokes about backwards forks and reflectors and spoke protectors and all that stuff. But if you're going in there to get that bike, Walmart is thinking that you might go in there and get your second or third or fourth bike and end up with an M1. And that's the customer for Viathon. Someone who's getting into the sport, someone who doesn't need a bike that says Santa Cruz on the side. I don't think that's a terrible thing, you know? They don't need a Santa Cruz, they don't need a Specialized, they don't need a Trek, they want to spend less money, they want to pick up a bike, maybe they want to get some groceries at the same time, it's very convenient. Um, but anyways, so let us know what you think below. This is a big story and I think this is bigger than our little mountain bike world. Earth! <laughs> Gravel bikes. We don't usually see gravel bikes on pink bike, but before you lose your shit, this thing is actually pretty cool. It's a full suspension gravel bike. It has 50 millimeters of travel out back and 50 millimeters up front. Now the rear suspension, it's their CVA dual link design. So there's a link under the bottom bracket and there's a link up top, triangulated rear triangle and a little tiny X-Fusion shock in the back. It's about this big to deliver that 50 mils of travel. We don't want any travel. It has a lockout switch up here at the handlebar. And interestingly, it also has this super clever top secret hidden KS dropper post lever switch thing right there because all gravel bikes should have dropper posts. I think all bikes should have dropper posts, but what do I know? So, tire size, 50 millimeter wide tires, which are huge on the gravel side of things, but you can also put two inch wide mountain bike tires in here as well. Full sleeve cable guides inside, so this thing, it's here at Sea Otter, people are oogling over it, but it's actually not available yet. They're thinking the fall, they do not have price or spec sorted out yet, but it's not gonna be inexpensive. This is a fairly high-end thing. You know, if it was around twenty-eight dollars to $3,000 for the frame, I wouldn't be surprised. So what do you guys think? Full suspension gravel bike with a drop of post? I don't know, it, it sounds kind of fun to me. I think I'm gonna get one of these just to fart around on, on the back roads. Do some exploring, ride something different. So next up, we're gonna go to One Up. They're a BC company, they do some interesting stuff. They got their new stem, they got some new handlebars and a new grip. Let's go have a look. So these One Up guys, they always have something clever. Sea Otter this year is no different. This is their EDC stem and it looks a lot like a normal stem and you can use it as a normal stem too. But if we take a closer look underneath, it uses a special system to tighten your headset. There's a cone that goes on the top of your headset and then a clamp that mates with it over top. And when you tighten that clamp down, it basically just pushes that conical spacer down and it tightens your headset. All you need is a little bit. So you, when you install the stem, you push it down by hand and then you tighten that. It takes up that tiny bit of slack. And that means that you don't have to thread the inside of your steer tube if you're gonna run their EDC tool. Pricing, the stem with the EDC system, $115. You can get the stem separately on its own for 85 bucks if you want. And they also have a new handlebar that we have to talk about. So this is the one-up handlebar. It doesn't have some catchy name or anything. It's another thing I like about these guys. And the idea here is to make a flexi, comfortable handlebar. And when I say flexi, they only want it to be flexi in the vertical plane, obviously not front to back. And they do that by shaping the carbon. It's 22 mils in here for as long as it possibly could be before it goes out to 35 mils. And if you look at it from the front, it's actually a low profile right here. It's low and it's wide. It's meant to be forgiving vertically, stiff this way. There's more stuff. They also do new grips. It doesn't have a name. I'm just gonna call it the one up grip. It uses a single clamp on the inside so your hands don't get all chafed up on it, the outside of your palm. To make it comfortable, what they've done, most lock-on grips have a sleeve inside. This one does too, except underneath your palm, there's no sleeve. So it's a little more forgiving where you need it, but the grip won't rotate. You're not gonna get throttle grip. So, one up, three new things, the EDC stem, handlebar, clever grips. So. Because it's tradition, the last thing we're gonna look at is the crazy bike I've been riding around. It's from a company called Ad Motor. It's an electric bike. It already has a motor on it, but anyways, the company's called Ad Motor. Most importantly, it has a throttle. It's pedal assist. I haven't done that once. All I've been doing is twisting the throttle and doing burnouts. It's been a hell of a good time. It's got a big seat so I can take passengers, pegs on the back. It's been great. 
We're done for the day here. Pink Bike is going to lock me back up in their tent for the night, and they're gonna let me out in the morning. We'll film another video tomorrow. Stay tuned for more products. See you guys later.